Oh, what the fuck? Is this already recording? Yeah, I like how you just looked into it. You literally, like, looked into the, its soul. <laughs> I didn't know it was recording already. Yeah, because I was like, it takes 10 minutes. Oh my god. Of a webinar. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Good morning or afternoon for those of you on the East Coast. Uh, my name is Desa Cree Daniel. I am a doctoral student at University of New Mexico um, and I am chair of the AMCD Professional Development Committee. And today we are here. You're videotaping me for your vlog. I like that on camera. Thank you. It's a sewing wool. Mmm. It's fancy. So I have to okay. not eat for the vlog cake. I'm gonna eat. <laughs> it's supposed to be normal. It's not supposed to. We're supposed to get your true self, Linda. Ready? Almost ready. Yeah, I've been ready. What am I doing? Okay. Dude, I was born ready, dude. You're not born ready. Dude, I was born ready, Daisy. Um. I was born ready to fight the oppression of people. Please don't put that in your vlog. <laughs> We're fighting oppression of Geo. I don't understand. This is why I need you on this because it's like we talk about the dumbest shit. Like who? <clears throat> Sorry, my advisor's emailing me stuff. Is it one that you don't like? It's not that I don't like him. It's just, <laughs> it's that, just like... that you don't like him. <laughs> <sighs> it's not that I don't like my advisor. It's just like. It never seems easy. You know what I mean? That's because you don't make it easy. <laughs> wow, this is my <laughs> fault. <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> How is that my fault? He's the advisor. He's supposed to, like, advise. And he's doing that, but you don't take the advice. Mm. Touche. Touche. That's why you don't like it, Lisa. <laughs> um, okay. So, why am I your best friend? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think that's one of the questions. You still can't have me found the question. Right? I'm just going to make them up. <laughs> You're supposed to be a Dr. Kennedy, and this is what's happening. I'm not. I have to pass comms first. I won't be a doctoral candidate until after August. August 2019. Okay, you don't need to start bringing dabs into this. <laughs> I'm so you ready can't to find graduate. I'm so tired. <laughs> Linda tired me out. <laughs> but she keeps going, dude. <laughs> she's like, See, she's ready to get another bowl of salad. It's because as soon as the door shut, she's like, I forgot what I was going to say. And then she just stares at me and I'm like, maybe this, maybe this. <laughs> she's, she's like, like no. No. <laughs> no. Oh yeah, that's the one. That's what we were going to talk yes, about today. Let's wait. But first, I'm like, great. Um, okay. So, we've been friends for a year. Oh, you came in December last I year. I did. Huh? But we never really talked in the beginning, though. Because <laughs> you're mean to me. It's because I know if I can trust you. What? How could you not trust me? <laughs> yeah, after... I just feel like if it wasn't for our mutual hatred by someone and our handshake, where would we really be? <laughs> we were like, is there a black people and Mexican version of Ebony and Ivory? <laughs> I can think of one. I'm like, who do you want to be? I'll be Will Smith. <laughs> I'll be all chopped with you. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, you're gonna be a drug lord? I'll be Jay Z. Oh, Jay Z. That's a good one. We could be like. <laughs> just moving our hands in the air. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Well, that's Jay Z. Oh, I don't really listen to Jay Z. How are you gonna be Jay Z if you listen to Jay Z? <laughs> I, I listen to his older stuff. I listen to his older stuff. Okay. Like, um. Nine Nine Problems? Yes. Okay. 
I'm yeah. like, what do you mean? My I was phone? like, if you don't if you know that song, you need to get out right now. Yeah. Shouldn't be Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could be like Little Jay. I mean, Little Wayne. Little Wayne? Didn't he get, just get out of prison? No, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I need you to be people who are like outstanding citizens. <laughs> like, Barack yeah. Obama. Oh, mm, touche. Yep. Yeah. Except I'm not president and I'm brown. He's mm, kind of brown. <laughs> kind of brown. <laughs> <laughs> Just depends on what shade you're talking about. Oh my you god. You could be Barack though. Could be like, what is this? <laughs> Going into the office of Joe Biden, like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. The Joe Biden bromance. Yeah. Although, if that's like our relationship, then I probably should be Obama and you should be Joe Biden. <laughs> we are talking about our Barack and Joe Biden friendship. Oh. <laughs> Which one? Who's Joe Biden? Huh? Who do you think is Joe Biden? <laughs> <laughs> so, today, it's still January 3rd, and I realized that I didn't vlog a lot today, <laughs> or I have a lot of content for you today, because it was one of the first days that we're back in the office at UNM, because Yesterday was a snow day, so today like the whole staff was back and it was just a little bit crazy and people were just trying to get stuff done and anyway. So I thought I would jump on here um, very quickly and talk a little bit about my journey into leadership. So, so in an earlier clip you saw that I did a webinar with Dr. Dickerson, Dr. Brooks, and Dr. Tinsley from Association for Multicultural Counseling and Development, which is AMCD. So I started doing student leadership um, when I was in my master's program. So um, in my master's program from like 2014 to 2015, I felt like I wasn't connected. I really felt like I was missing something in my program. Um, my program was fantastic in terms of like skills and um, competencies and content. I feel like I walked away from that master's program getting everything I needed in terms of like becoming a mental health pr practitioner in a lot of ways. Um, but I felt that as a woman of color and a black academic that I wasn't connected to like what was going on outside of my program outside of New Mexico. So that kind of like pushed me into applying to conferences and going to conferences. Uh, and then it just kind of spiraled me into being like, you know, I can find people nationwide on the national level who are interested in topics like I'm interested in, who are doing research I want to be doing, who are just people that I want to know overall, but then also like mentorship, which has been um, a pretty big uh, just influence in my life overall. So I started by just doing student leadership. So, um, and then over time, I was like, I should run for something just a little bit bigger, not bigger, but like something a little bit more on the national level. Like I wanted to be involved enough to have a say and like be able to have um like a voice in what was happening, what was happening in terms of student leadership, student policy, student development, um, all of those things. So um, when I was a master's student, I applied. <laughs> This is so crazy. Like, I look back now and I'm like, what was I doing? Like, where, like, where were my mentors at to be like, Desa, what are you doing? Um, when I was a master's student, I applied to be student representative of Division 45. And I actually became a Division 45 student rep my first semester as a doc student. So I think that it's funny because people are like, oh, you've been student rep for so long. Like, when are you going to graduate? And I'm just like, it's just now my third year. Like, I have been a student rep as long as I've been a doc student. So 
that kind of has just been such a journey, such an eye-opening experience overall. Um, and while I was doing stuff for Division 45, which is very psychology, um, I also started doing stuff in counseling. Um, so counselor education, mental health counseling, which are very much two separate associations from APA to ACA. Um, and my first kind of academic home in ACA was uh, AMCD. And so I had um, just the honor of being asked to help lead the professional development committee for the 2017-2018 um, Dr. Sean Smith presidential year. Um, and it's actually gone way, just way better than I could ever imagine. Um, there's been a lot of moments like today where um, during the webinar, I was just so nervous. Like, I was just really like uncomfortable um because i i was worried that like how my relationship was with some of the presenters um isn't like what i wanted it to be and so um in the past i think i just would have like blown it off and been like you know what whatever like it's not that big of a deal, like move on. Um, but I'm glad I took a moment to email one of the presenters and just reach out to her and just be like, hey, like I'm really sorry that I wasn't on my A game. This is why I was nervous and it was really hard for me to um, like say anything because I, I feel like even though people see me as being very established, I don't have a PhD, right? So like, I still am a master's, like, I still only have a master's degree. I don't have a PhD of my own. And so when I work a lot with people who have a PhD, it's hard for me sometimes to feel like super confident um, and super confident in like what I'm saying. And I know people feel like that's just not an issue uh, because of how I present myself, but I have fears and worries and concerns and all kinds of stuff as well. So I think the only place that I have a lot more confidence is Division 45. And I feel like it's because Division 45 has been my family since day one. Like they're the first division I joined. They're my first mentors. They're the first people who showed up for me. Like people in Division 45 are the ones who like came to my mom's funeral services. So it's like, I just have a completely different respect and like relationship with some of the people in that division. And even though it's very professional as well, I just feel like I, I can be authentic and I can be vulnerable and I can be nervous because they know, like they know me on such a personal level. And I, I think that's, it's a hard thing to learn to balance. Um, and I like, this is what, what the point of this series is, is so that I can, better challenge myself to be open and authentic in every aspect. And I think that, you know, like a week ago, I never in a million years would have emailed anyone and been like, you know what, I'm really sorry that I did not give you my best because this is what was going on for me. I wanted to really talk about how I got into student leadership and how it was intentional in terms of just like applying but also it, it was a lifeline. Like I started leadership because I needed, I needed to know that there was something more than what I was experiencing in my home institution at the time. Um, and it really helped me like feel like I was on the right path. I feel like without those experiences and without leadership, there's so many people I wouldn't know. Like yeah, like it just feels like this snowball effect of just like amazing things that have happened to me over the years and like the amazing people I've met. So I am not sure if there'd be a ton of content since school starting and I'm just figuring this out y'all. Like I don't know what this is supposed to look like. I'm just winging it. I hope that um, you are enjo enjoying this journey as much as I am. Comment down below a time that you showed courage in admitting that you were wrong or like you did something that just wasn't your best self so I feel like I really showed courage today in doing that and I it really made a huge difference for me and like this pathway in this journey um and it also just reminded me that I'm human and like I'm trying y'all I'm trying so hard um 
And so, hope you all had a wonderful day and enjoyed this first week. I'm not sure if I'll post a video on Sunday or not. I usually don't do social media on Sundays, um, but we'll see. You just never know, right? Um, and please like and subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye! Just kidding, I'm tired.